Yeah, $20 versus $200. Which one is better? Let's find out. In the Shockwave box, you get the USB charging cable, the Shockwave unit itself, which installs into your Rurock helmet. You get the two speakers, and you get a mic, which is connected to one of the speakers. You don't get any sticky pads, but you don't need them because Rurock helmet already comes with them pre-installed. In the box for the BT-30 unit, you get the speakers, you get the mic, the mic is attached to one of the speakers, you get the USB charging cable, two mic covers, four stickers, instruction manual, six sticky pads to attach the speakers to, so you can put them in three different helmets and be able to use that unit in three different helmets. Given that I'm attaching this unit to a Rurock helmet, which already has placements for speakers, I'm not going to be using the sticky pads. It is worth mentioning that Rurox Shockwave, the charger cover, is not, it doesn't look waterproof and does not look dustproof. It's just a flap that is, it looks to be snug in there. It's kind of hard to pull it away, but it's just flapping in the wind, basically. And I think eventually uh, there will be slack that will develop and the amount of protection it will offer uh, from the elements is going to dramatically reduce, in my opinion. So both of the units connect to your phone very fast. You just put them in the pairing mode, go into your phone Bluetooth setting, find the device, click connect, and it connects right away. Also, it's worth noting that both of them have very limited lag for all the inputs so when you click next song volume up volume down previous song pause all of that gets triggered very fast on your phone so there's a very limited lag between both of those devices they're virtually identical when it comes to that So now for the million dollar question, and it's not which one should you get, it's which one suits your ride and or riding style. So what I would say is if you have a naked bike, you get hit with the wind a lot, you don't have a very quiet helmet, so meaning you, you hear a lot of the wind inside to the point where if you talk in your helmet you can barely hear yourself, then get the shockwave, you know. If you do a lot of highway riding and that's the case, get the shockwave. It's a little bit louder, it's a little bit crisper, there's a little bit more bass. 
Now, it does not worth 170, 180 bucks premium that you pay over the BT30. With the BT30, you get a lot more bang for your buck. So, if you have a quiet helmet when you're riding, if you don't hear a lot of noise, you can hear yourself speak. Uh, then you're probably going to be able to get away with the BT30. If you have a bike with a windshield that again blocks out a lot of the wind, you're probably going to do fairly well with the BT30. If you're riding in the city uh, where you don't really go faster than 50 miles an hour, even if you're riding a naked and there is when you go fast there's a lot of wind, but if you're riding in the city there's going to be much less wind. I would say you will be able to get away with the BT30 as well. Now, if you want to pick up the BT30, uh, there's going to be an affiliate link in the description so you can get one or explore some other units. I'm going to leave you guys with this video of me riding my bike where I share more thoughts about the shockwave. This was from a recent trip that I've taken. The full video is going to come out in a couple of weeks. So make sure to subscribe and if, video, if this video helped you out, make sure to like it. And if you want to know something in particular, make sure to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Alright, take care. Holy smokes! It's windy! Wow, this is way windier than it was on that other road. Alright, well, let's see if we can do this. So, shockwave. I got the Herman and Carden edition. I guess that's their latest, latest and greatest. So, it's 200 bucks. And then the other version, the regular version, is 170. So. The sound quality and the volume is very good. I'm actually using it right now for the navigation and I can hear when the navigation tells me like where to go and it's actually very very helpful versus when you have to watch the screen all the time. And yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it totally fine. Now the battery also seems to be very good. Uh, it's probably good for two full days of riding, I would think. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear me through all this wind and the noise because I can barely hear myself but hopefully you can so that's the good so the battery is great the sound quality it, I, I want to say sound quality is great but it's really it's, it's relative you know it's relative because you're on a motorcycle there's wind all around you <laughs> so, so great is relative like you can hear the lyrics and you can hear the, the music sometimes you can't though <laughs> so but most of the time you can like it's loud enough and the battery is just is, is, is good enough like for me that like two days you know basically I can charge it for the weekend go ride and then I can charge it again for the next weekend and maybe it's maybe it's more maybe it's better than than just two days I'm just assuming you know but from from what I'm seeing right now the battery on it is very good so that's the good now the bad <coughs> the bad well another point for the good um, it, it's it's very flush right you don't sacrifice any comfort it, it installs in the helmet you don't see it there's no wires nothing so it's very nice in that regard and then the bad now the bad 
is This is amazing guys, look at it. Woohoo! <laughs> oh windy. Alright, so the bad is the buttons. And I think that's something that every every device of this sort struggles with. You know, it's the buttons. How do you control? The ease of control. Uh, you know, when, when you understand which button you're pushing, when you're pushing it. Because half the time, like literally 50% of the time, I have no idea what I'm pushing which button I'm pushing I just push it and then I kind of want to see then I look if something happened and um, if something happened I know what I pushed I pushed the right one well probably <clears throat> you can really operate only one button though and that's the plus so volume up or the next song anything else is too difficult to to reach like to reach minus right to, to reach volume down i have to actually turn my my head the opposite way you know to make sure the back of the helmet kind of swings swings closer to my left hand and then I can you know with with some difficulty find that minus button and operate it which is not safe not safe whatsoever on on the highway not safe at all so So yeah, I pretty much like everything about the system. Besides the controls. Now the question is, is it better than some of the $20 systems that you find out there? And I will say yes, it is. And the biggest thing that it has going for it is the volume. It is actually pretty loud. But then again, it kind of depends on where you're riding. Because if you're riding, like I'm doing right now, like highway riding, I mean, you need something loud. Because otherwise, you're not going to be able to hear anything. If you're driving, or if you're riding in the city, you can 100%, 100% you can get away with a $20 one. Now, I actually bought both so I can I speak from experience I'm using the shockwave just because I like it more you know because it's it, it it installs better it's louder the uh, the sound is crisper the battery is good the battery on the other one is very good too though it, it actually lasts for a very long time
another there's one more big big fat negative about the shockwave that I forgot to mention and that is you cannot operate Siri like right now hey Siri hey Siri hey Siri <laughs> Like you can't, you can't operate Siri, it just does not pick it up. And it's the same, like I find it as long as my bike, as long as I'm moving on my bike, no matter how fast, it just cannot, uh, cannot activate Siri. Which kind of sucks because if you could, if you actually could activate Siri, then you can use Siri, basically hands-free, to change your songs, add volume, you know, do whatever. You would need the buttons on the back, and that would actually make this unit way, way better. But, unfortunately, Siri doesn't work. <laughs> 